Well, hello everyone. This is your friendly neighborhood pastor coming to you from Christ the King Lutheran Church in Escanaba, Michigan. Today is January 11th. We are getting ready for this weekend, um, January 15th, where we are preparing for John the Baptist, who is preparing the way for Jesus again. We met him in Advent. We will meet uh, John the Baptist again in Lent, and we get him now this second Sunday after Epiphany. And so, as always, let me go ahead and read this passage for you. Our gospel reading for this weekend is from John chapter 1, verses 29 through 42, and then give you some thoughts and considerations on this uh, beautiful passage. St. John writes, When he, John the Baptist, saw Jesus coming towards him, he declared, Here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who ranks ahead of me, because he was before me. I myself didn't know him, but I came baptizing with water for this reason, that he might be revealed to Israel. And John testified, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it remained on him. I myself did not know him, but the one who sent me to baptize with water said to me, He on whom you see the Spirit descend and remain is the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I myself have seen and have testified that this is the Son of God. The next day John again was standing with two of his disciples, and as he watched Jesus walk by, he exclaimed, Look, here is the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. When Jesus turned around and saw them following, he said to them, What are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which means teacher, Where are you staying? He said to them, Come and see. They came and saw where he was staying, and they remained with him that day. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon. One of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which is translated anointed. He brought Simon to Jesus, who looked at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. You are to be called Cephas, which is translated Peter. The Gospel of our Lord. Now, a number of things to, to point out in this um gospel passage from, from John's gospel, talking about John the baptizer, uh, two different people. We hear in this passage a number of different titles, and, and I think uh, this is where I'm being led by the Spirit for, for this weekend at our congregation. Uh, I'm just really being drawn to this image of Jesus as the Lamb of God, and it, it's such a, just a very pregnant image full of biblical and theological meaning and, and value, and just really, really deep stuff there. Um, but we hear Paul, John call Jesus the Lamb of God. We hear um, John call Jesus, this is the one who will baptize with the Holy Spirit. We call John, say that Jesus is the Son of God. We hear um, Jesus being called a rabbi, a teacher. We hear Jesus being called the Messiah, the Anointed. All these different titles uh, helping to paint a portrait for who Jesus is. And each one of these titles um, adds a little bit of a, uh, more of a piece to the puzzle. And um, and so first, the Lamb of God is a passage that is talking, uh, excuse me, is a title that, that's loaded with a lot of Old Testament um, uh, theology and, and, and some important places are like in, in Exodus chapter 12, the Passover lamb that was killed, blood being um, put over the doorposts of the home so that the, uh, when the Lord comes to bring judgment upon Egypt to kill the firstborn, all those who have blood on their doors will be saved, that they will be passed over. And so uh, there's some of that going on there. There's some of the imagery of the lamb being slain, like from Leviticus with the sacrificial system where blood uh, comes to, to placate God's wrath. Um, there's lots of different offerings, uh, but certainly guilt offerings is one of them that we hear about in Leviticus 14 and Leviticus 16. We hear about the Day of Atonement, though that's uh, more goats than it is lamb. Um, but a lot of these Old Testament sacrificial uh, offerings, burnt offerings, guilt offerings, sin offerings, uh, kind of are, are wrapped up in this image of, of Jesus as the Lamb of God. We also hear the Lamb of God in, in other significant places. Um, for example, like in Revelation, Revelation chapter 5, chapter 7, uh, and a couple of other places where it talks about Jesus who is the Lion, but then 
Um, John turns and sees, he hears the lion, but then he turns and sees and he sees a lamb, a lamb who is slain, but a lamb who conquers. And so that image of Jesus as the lamb of God who died, who bled, who gives himself as uh, as John chapter 6 says, for food for the world, um, to, to connect that with some Eucharistic theology uh, where Jesus says, take my body, eat, here is my blood, drink this. And, and so uh, that Lamb of God image is just, just really, really powerful. Hebrews picks up on that sacrificial language as well. Um, Son of God is, is a very important uh, image. A very important title for Jesus. We heard that um, through Christmas, Jesus is the Lord, um, the Son of God at his birth. So he's not, uh, he doesn't all of a sudden become the Son of God. Um, that's what is called a part of the adop adoptionistic controversy in the early church that Jesus became the Son of God, but Jesus has always been the Son of God. In John chapter 1, in the first few verses, un unpacks that as well. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Uh, and so this, this Jesus is the Son of God. He can trace all of his lineage back ultimately to God. As Jesus says later in John's Gospel, before Moses was, I am. And here in, in uh, from John the Baptizer's words, he talks about how Jesus ranks ahead of him and is before him. Though if we remember the chrono uh, chronological part of the story, um, John the Baptist was born before Jesus, yet, yet Jesus comes before um, John, because he is the preexistent Son of God. Jesus as teacher, we have that uh, being unpacked for us throughout this time after Epiphany, especially as we're looking at the uh, Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter 5, 6, and 7. We'll look at those in the weeks ahead. Um, but also Jesus as Messiah, God's anointed, God's chosen instrument to bring salvation uh, to this world, to be this sin-bearing substitute, to be the Savior, to be the one who will do all that God commands, and, and to give himself up as an offering um, to bring and procure forgiveness for all those who believe. So just lots of lots of important stuff going on in the titles. Um, something else to, to take note of, uh, Jesus is the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. We heard that last week with, with Jesus, uh, his own baptism, that he comes to baptize with the Holy Spirit. Um, and so water, I, I think, is assumed in this, uh, but it's not explicitly stated. But usually whenever the Holy Spirit is uh, and baptism are mentioned, they're, they're usually mentioned in tandem, and one is kind of meant with, with the other, um, at least in baptismal context. So uh, we also hear in the end of this passage the calling of Simon and Peter. Next week we'll hear from uh, Matthew's Gospel, uh, chapter 4, with the calling of the other disciples. But here we have Peter and Andrew being called. And so God, uh, Jesus initiating the, the new covenant community with his apostles and disciples. And so um, Jesus is on the move. Uh, this is about, this passage is largely about his identity, who he is, what he's come to do, what he's come to say, uh, what he represents. And so this is just a very, just a very beautiful identifying passage for who this Jesus person is setting us off into this nice trajectory for the time after Epiphany where we hear more and more and more who Jesus is and, and who we are in relation to this Lord, to this Savior, to this Son of God, this Messiah, this Lamb of God who's come to take away the sin of the world. So lots of stuff going on here. Uh, dive in. You will not be disappointed. And this beautiful passage it continues to be beautiful. That's why we uh, read it every... Um, every couple of years, uh, and it's, it's, it's well worth its weight in gold. So enjoy this passage, and enjoy digging into it, and enjoy the Lord, your Savior, who is the Lamb of God, who has come to take away your sin and mine as well. Um, God be with you until we meet again. God bless. Take care.